Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be going over how I made a 3D printed stencil of my logo, complete with my name on the bottom. So follow along and see how I did it. The first step in making this stencil was to import a DXF file of what I had saved from some other things that I made. This, uh, this made it pretty easy, but if you don't have that saved, you can use some program like Inkscape. After I get it imported, put my name on the bottom, and then after that, I drew a, a rectangle around it. My Mono Price Select Mini has a 4.7 by 4.7 inch bed, but it doesn't look like it quite can quite do that. At least Kura wouldn't let me let me make something quite that big, so I had to end up scaling it down just a little bit. But with everything drawn, I went ahead and extruded my logo through the solid piece, creating a cut, and did the same thing with my name. And then what I had to do was actually connect everything together with these lines. Just did this free form, but after that was done, I did an offset command so that I could make them into kind of strings that would connect it. Now the great thing about 3D printing is that these actually go on top of it. So there's a little bit of space between where the strings are and where the, where the work piece is. So if, if you spray paint it, you can actually get some, get some spray paint under it. So you're not gonna even see any sort of gap between everything. But anyway, after the offset command was done, I had to connect everything together and then extruded that just like I did the base. This would produce those support members, I guess those strings you might call them. And you can see it here, they're in three dimensions. So that looks pretty good. And gotta connect the O's and everything else, of course, just so everything stays in place and they're not just shifting around. After that, I sent it to Cura. And with that, it sent the commands to my printer, which obediently printed everything out. Besides uh, having to minimize the pattern a little bit, everything worked pretty much pretty much flawlessly as it generally does. You can see it there filling in the gaps and just printing, printing, and printing. So after that was all finished, I had to take it out, take out my trusty 3D printing knife and separate everything. Now that was probably the most nerve wracking part of this build, not that it was too stressful of a build, but everything's just held together by those little members. And it all came out okay. So with that done, it was trying to test it on my on my workbench. You know, test it out before testing it on uh, street signs and sidewalks and such. But there I am with my black spray paint, just over probably over spraying it too much. And after not waiting for, for it to dry, I, at least not as much as I should have, took the wrappers off and there it is. Jeremy S. Cook in legible letters. I decided to also paint this mini PC that I had for, that runs my CNC equipment. Should have probably made a black mark on it to begin with, but I've got a cure for that in just a second. So take that off and again, it says Jeremy S. Cook. And for that white part, I just filled it in with magic marker. So another use for a stencil like this is to make a bleach t-shirt. There I am showing off the technique here, just spraying it in. And I put another thing on the bottom because, you know, just trying out the technique. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or, you know, leave a comment or even share it. Jeremy S. Cook, signing off. Oh, and what happened to the t-shirts? Yeah, that didn't work so well. It looks, uh, looks like it was put in some sort of chemical bath, like maybe like the Joker fell in before it became what he, what he is in the movies, I, I guess. Um, but yeah, so I need some more practice in this, but otherwise it worked out 